Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I put together 15 of my favorite Halloween DIYs, all with a little bit of a coastal flair and using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So let's get started with the first one. I wanted to make like a coastal version of like a sea witch. So to start with, for the little body of the witch, I'm just gonna use a traffic cone that I got from Dollar Tree. Now mine is rather large. I've noticed in the toy aisle, like at my Dollar Tree, they do have a smaller version of this. So you could make like maybe more of a medium version of this too. This one actually came from like the hardware aisle at my Dollar Tree. And so I thought it would be great for like the gown of a sea witch. So that's what we're gonna use for the base. It's gonna give our whole little witch some structure. But first it was bright orange. So I just painted it with a coat of white just to make it not stand out when I cover it with burlap. Now you can use whatever kind of burlap you have. I have this like burlap six inch roll that I had from Walmart. And so I don't really want it to have finished edges. So I'm just gonna cut it into strips and try to form a gown out of it. I did use a little twine to try to attach it here at the top. And I'm just gonna keep going over it with strips until I have like a long flowing gown for like a sea witch. Now Dollar Tree has burlap now like in the rolls um, and you can always buy it in bulk pretty inexpensively like at Walmart and other stores. Pretty much any way you can get some burlap. It's going to give you the same effect but I think the burlap is great if you want to do like the coastal feel. So I like crisscrossed and then I'm going diagonal crisscrossing again just because I kind of wanted enough to cover like the entire body have it like all look like it's flowing down. And so I just used twine to tie all of mine on. And then I'm also gonna do some twine just around the body, tying it up a little bit just to give it a little bit more shape. And I do that along the bottom of the traffic cone too. And then start to cut like a circular shape around the bottom. So that is her initial body. Now it's time we needed a like sea witch head and they have these little witches from the Dollar Tree. They're like little hanging. So they have like the little green witches uh, face or head and there's also like metal attached arms to it. So I thought I would leave the arms on there and I could use that for part of the structure. It's just got to find a way to attach the little sea witch head to my traffic cone. Now, I thought that it would be easier and maybe a little stronger if I attached the plastic to plastic. So I did cut my burlap out. So I actually had the plastic showing through here in the top. Don't know if that made it any stronger, but it seems to have held up. So I just do um, some hot glue on the top of my traffic cone and then sit my little witch head right on top. And like the arms are attached with just a piece of metal. They're flexible. They kind of have foam on them. I'm gonna kind of leave that as is, but fold them down towards the side. Now I am going to do a cloak um, like over the shoulders of the sea witch, but I want the front part of her gown to look nice. And my burlap had a lot of seams and stuff like that. So I just take another piece and I'm basically just gonna attach that to the front part of our little sea witch. So just a little hot glue along the base of the neck back here. And that'll make the burlap look nice and flowing there in the front. But for like the shoulders and stuff like that, I want to do somewhat of a cloak. And I wanted to use some of this creepy cloth like to be involved in it too. But right now I think it might need a little bit more burlap. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start the cloak with the burlap just by cutting more strips. And I am just gonna glue that right on top, like have it come together right in the front, kind of like a cloak would be, but kind of having it drape over like the little arm and stuff like that, just because I felt like I needed a little bit more burlap before I start adding like the creepy cloth, because you might be able to see like the foam and stuff through there. So I kind of fold it back here to kind of give it like a cloak appearance there on the front. 
And then I'm just gonna do a, another piece here on the other side the same exact way, gluing it along the base of the neck and then making it a little longer so that I can just glue it back a little bit to kind of give it that fun look. And then I'm gonna attach that to each one of the little witch arms. That witch is kind of like scary looking like that without any hair or anything, isn't she? Just so it'll kind of stay in place. And this is a pretty durable DIY. Um, sometimes I use this inside, sometimes I use it outside, but she's nice and creepy. Now for the rest of the cloak, I wanted to use the creepy cloth. So this is the ivory. They have it ivory and black. I chose ivory because it kind of reminded me a little bit of fishing net. And I just wrap that over our little witch shoulders like that. Attaching it with a little hot glue here so it does stay in place. And wrapping that around, gluing it in the front too so it will stay on the little witch's shoulders. And it's really cool because you can see like the burlap through it. And then I'm also going to hot glue it here to that front strip that we did just to kind of keep everything in place and laying the way that I want it to. Now I didn't cut that or anything, I kind of left it all one piece. And so now I'm gonna cut off like the excess material, leaving a little extra to kind of like drape on the ground. And can you kind of see like that kind of like fishing net? I thought that would give it kind of like a little bit of a coastal vibe with the creepy cloth. And just to like make it a little bit thicker, I'm just gonna go ahead and use some of the excess fabric that I had and kind of drape that over the witch's shoulders too. Maybe doing like a little bit of a second layer here just to make it a little bit thicker. Now our little sea witch is gonna need some hair. So I'm gonna use one of these grass skirts from the Dollar Tree. I try to buy these all the time. I buy them, I mean, a lot of times they don't sell out of them. So a lot of times they still have them in my stores. And so I use them all the time for coastal crafting, especially I thought this would make a nice creepy witch hair, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on the string, cut off enough that's gonna go around the witch's head here. She definitely needs some hair. I know it's kind of hard to see right now because she's kind of a large project. So it's kind of hard to get her an angle. Here we go. I just tied it like in a little ring, like a little halo here to go around her head with an opening in the front for the little sea witch face. And then it's just a matter of attaching that to it. Um, I want to go ahead and cut it too though, just because it was really long. She doesn't need that long of hair. So I just put it on like a ring. I think that looks way better. And then I'm gonna go in with hot glue and just glue that to the top of her head. Now I'm not worried about her having like, you know, super cool hair or anything like that because she's gonna have a witch hat. For the witch hat, I picked up one of these little tinsel witch hats from the Dollar Tree. And let's give it a little bit of a coastal makeover first by removing all of this messy tinsel. It does come apart and it leaves you with a perfect size cage for a witch hat for this size. So I wanna replace all of that crazy tinsel with just some Dollar Tree rope. I chose like the thinner brown rope from Dollar Tree, but it doesn't matter. You could probably use either one, but you get this great plastic cage underneath of it. And I'm just gonna start on the tip of the little witch hat, attaching it with some hot glue and wrapping that around. This gave me a great texture. So like the cloak, you know, of the sea witch is burlap with like that creepy cloth, like fishnet. And then the little hat will be covered in rope. And we can do a few other coastal touches as well to make her look like a sea witch instead of just a regular witch. But if you don't wanna do the coastal like version, you this would look really good regardless. I think the rope on here looks way better than the Dollar Tree tinsel for sure. Now, when I get to the base of it, I go all the way around. I wanna kinda cover all of the plastic that you might see. If I were just gonna display that little witch hat like that for a display piece, I think that would be good. But since that it's gonna be on her head, you might be able to see underneath the brim. So I decided to add a little bit more rope on this side of it too, um, just to make it look more finished. So same thing, I just kinda start at the opening and then just hot glue the rope around until it meets up with the rope from above.
And I think that looks pretty good. So now it's just a matter of putting that like on our little witch's head. I wanna make sure it stays in place and doesn't fall off. So I just line the inside with hot glue and slip that right over her head. And that also helps to glue on the little witch hair. Now every witch needs a broom, right? And I found one of the little cinnamon like little brooms from the Dollar Tree, but it needed a stick. So I'm just taking a Dollar Tree dowel and staining it with some Antique Wax by Waverly to kind of give it more medium stain and then trimming it down to size. And we're just gonna attach that to this little cinnamon broom that we got from the Dollar Tree. Now Dollar Tree does have some brooms as well, but they didn't really have any that I liked. So I decided to kind of create my own here. I just hot glue the dowel on the end of that little cinnamon broom and it's great because it smells nice too for fall. Now for the seam to make it a little bit stronger, I decided to hot glue just twine um, going around and, and that's gonna help keep it together to make sure that this little broom doesn't fall apart. Now she is standing up, right? So I'm just gonna kind of take the little broom and put it next to her like she's holding it. But I think that this is gonna be a pretty good scale for her. So I just did a couple rows of the twine until I felt like it was really good and secure and then trim off the excess. Now a few coastal touches to give her that sea witch look. I'm decided to kind of put that in her hand like kind of where her arm comes out to her side. So I decided to glue it just so it'll kind of stay there along the side of our little witch. And then I thought we should decorate the hat with some coastal touches, like a little seashell that I found on the beach. And then I thought like one of the Dollar Tree starfishes would be a nice fun beach touched as well. It's a little big for her hat though. So I'm gonna put that down below. I also took a Dollar Tree button and just kind of put that at the top of her cloak. I thought that'd be a nice little touch. And then I just attached the starfish down here along the base with a little hot glue kind of in like that creepy cloth stuff to decorate the other side of our sea witch. And she is almost ready. I thought her face looked a little plastic. And so I'm just gonna go over it with a couple coats of matte Mod Podge just to kind of make her look maybe not so much like plastic, maybe more of a more of a matte ceramic look is what I wanted to go with her. And I think that helped a little bit. But here she is, our first coastal DIY for Halloween, a little sea witch. I displayed her with a pumpkin that I just covered with Dollar Tree sand. Super fun DIY as well. But there she is in all of her glory. I think she looks nice and creepy, a little bit coastal, but super fun for Halloween. And who would know that that was a traffic cone under all of that, right? <laughs> I think I love all the different textures between the raffia hair, the creepy cloth, the rope, the burlap, a seashell, a starfish. We've got a little bit of everything here but I think the details are really beautiful and she's one of my favorite Halloween DIYs. Okay, the next Halloween DIY is a favorite. I'm gonna make a really fun beach scene for skeletons. So I want it to look like a skeleton family is at the beach. To do that, I'm gonna use just a Dollar Tree sign. I chose like a rectangular sign that had a frame that I could use that would kind of keep like sand in there because I want it to look like a sand beach scene, right? Now there was like, you know, a bright print on mine. So I just went over it with a little bit of like cashew colored paint just to cover that up a little bit. I'm gonna cover the entire base of it with sand. Doesn't really matter, but I didn't want you to be able to see that through the sand in the final project. Now for the little Adirondack chairs, I found these little plastic ones at the toy section at Dollar Tree and they're blue. I think they're perfect. I did want them to look a little bit more coastal farmhouse. So I distress all over with just a little bit of ivory paint to kind of roughen them up, make them look a little bit less like plastic, a little bit less shiny with that chalk paint finish. Now for the skeletons, I chose like this four pack they're like all hanging. Um, I thought these would be the perfect size and I'm only gonna do three. I think I can only really fit three. I'll have like um, two in the chair and like one um, like burying itself in the sand. It can be like the little kid version, right? 
they look pretty good. I decided to kind of color in their like eye sockets a little bit with a paint pen, but otherwise I kind of left them as is. So I thought we could do like the mom and dad sitting in the little beach chairs. So before I attach my sand, I'm gonna go ahead and glue my beach chairs down to the sign to make sure it stays in place. But then we can start working on sand. Whenever I attach sand for a, like a coastal or beach project, I always use school glue, it works great. And I use a paintbrush to spread that out. Now I told you one was gonna be like a little child skeleton, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and glue him down before I add the sand because we're gonna look at look like look like he's like buried in the sand like kids do at the beach. And so I just go over the whole thing with some Dollar Tree sand. This is like kind of the wider sand, but it would look really good with the tan sand as well. Just whatever you can find at Dollar Tree. It's always kind of hard to find the kind that you're looking for. Now, once I get it all in there, I go over it with some spray glue. I find that this helps keep the glue down because you're gluing it from above. And this is just the aerosol um, spray glue from Dollar Tree. And then while it's wet, I too try to go over it with a little bit more sand to glue to it. And see how like the skeleton down there that we buried, he can have like some of his like hands and feet like peeking through and you definitely want to see his little head. So I'm just going to dry off any parts that I don't want to be covered in sand. And then we can do like a little mom and dad skeleton hanging out in these little chairs. They're the perfect size. Since it is a Halloween DIY, I wanted a pumpkin to decorate it to make sure that you know that it is Halloween at the beach, right? So I use a little tiny pumpkin from Dollar Tree. I had a white one. And so I just painted it um, pumpkin chalk paint by Waverly just to give it a little regular pumpkin color there. And I just wanna add some little fun details for our little skeleton's day at the beach. So I thought they definitely needed a pumpkin. I'm gonna use a ping pong ball from the Dollar Tree as well. And we're gonna create like a little beach ball out of that. It's already white, so I thought it'd be really easy to create a beach ball just by using some paint pens and doing like a little red quadrant on there and a blue and a yellow. Super easy, and then you leave the rest of it white, and it's gonna look just like a traditional a beach ball. And I just wanted some fun little things to decorate it a little bit more, just because it was a little plain, I really wanted to give that day at the beach vibes. Now, I thought that the mom and the dad skeleton could use some swimsuits. So I'm actually gonna use one of these little chamois, the little car chamois from the Dollar Tree. Um, for some orange felt, I thought the orange would be a great color for Halloween to make them some swimsuits. So I just cut out some swim shorts by cutting it out, like kind of doubling it up and then using hot glue to attach that. No sew, very simple, kind of like some little tiny doll clothes for some little shorts here for the dad. Nothing crazy, but super fun. And then I'm also gonna hot glue him in place so that he doesn't fall around. I want him to stay here in the little beach chair. Now for the little mom, I decided to make her a bikini. So I did that by cutting two triangles out of the chamois and then just kind of hot gluing them on a little bit like, it kind of looks a little bit like a diaper here. And then for her top, I'm gonna to do the same thing just by cutting out some triangles to kind of make a little bikini top for her and then cutting like another strap to attach them together and another strap to kind of go around the neck to kind of make it look like she's wearing a bikini. Doesn't have to be like a real swimsuit, but I just kind of want to give it like the illusion that they're wearing swimsuits. The little boy one is buried in the sand, so he doesn't need a swimsuit at all. And I thought that was another fun touch to kind of, you know, give the day at the beach vibe for our little skeleton family. And then I wanted something a little bit taller to stick out of the back. So I decided to take a couple of these, um, like one of these jumbo popsicle sticks from Walmart. And I just want to cut down two little surfboards. They're naturally kind of shaped like a surfboard anyway, but I cut them a little bit pointier to um, give them that surfboard vibe. And I want it to look like the surfboards are kind of standing up here in the background, um, like they've been out surfing at the beach. 
So I did one for him and one for her. So I'm going to do them like different colors too. So I painted one of the popsicle sticks that pumpkin color, the other one this black ink color, and then I'm going to decorate them a little bit too. So they'll kind of provide little signs um, as a decoration too. I had a little beach sign. This is a fairy garden decoration from Dollar Tree that I just glued on the little table in between and then put the pumpkin underneath of it or in front. Now for the orange surfboard, we're going to make it look like a jack-o'-lantern. I just used a black sharpie and drew a very simple little jack-o'-lantern face right on there. And then for the black the black one, I decided to, to um, put bad to the bone on there with a white paint pen. I thought that would be really fun. And then we have our orange and black surfboard. So nice traditional Halloween colors as well. I just glued those to the edge of my little frame back here. So they kind of peek up in the back of my little beach scene when you view it from the front. Here's our little ping pong beach ball. And then we're at the beach, right? So let's add some little tiny seashells from the Dollar Tree to the sand as well. I just try to secure everything with hot glue. It's a little hard to glue to the sand. If you press them down deep enough though, you can kind of glue them to whatever structure that you were using underneath. And then I'm also gonna hot glue our little pumpkin in place right here in front. And our little skeleton day at the beach is complete. How fun is this DIY? I had so much fun putting this together. I've had a lot of you guys recreate this DIY, which I love seeing all of your different versions. If you do, be sure to post it in our Facebook group. I'd love to see it. I displayed it with my little skeleton shark over there that I got at Spirit Halloween. Love it. Okay, this is another, this might be one of my most popular Halloween DIYs ever. We're going to make a haunted beach house. So to start with, I chose two of the same little plastic doll houses from the toy aisle at Dollar Tree. Doesn't matter which version you get, really. I kind of thought this one looked nice and sweet. Um, they have um, different colors. It doesn't matter the colors because we're going to paint it. I don't need any of the accessories, even though they're kind of cute. I took mine outside and spray painted the whole thing with some hidden sea glass color spray paint. Then once I got that dry, I'm going to go in and kind of touch it up here and there because there were like some little touches of pink showing through. So I just go in with some like blue agave, light blue colors and kind of distress it all over because I do want it to look like a haunted house. I want it to look a little bit distressed. Then these pair together so that you can close it into a house if you have two of them like this. So there's little clips on the side, but I helped it out by adding some hot glue here along the roof line because I really want it to stay close together and not have like that gap in between the two different houses. As you can see, when I kind of touched the paint, a little bit came off. So I did have to distress it some more. No problems. You could always paint this with um, out using spray paint, but there were so many little nooks and crownies, especially like inside. I thought it would turn out a little bit better, be a little easier with spray paint. Now to make the beach house part of it. I wanted to have it up on stilts. So I'm going to use some Dollar Tree Jenga blocks to make four stilts for our little beach house. And then we're going to use a little Dollar Tree wood sign and a Dollar Tree bamboo cutting board to make the structure. So for the house itself, I'm going to use just one of these rectangular crafting signs from Dollar Tree from the crafting square. It was about the right size for the um, the bottom base of the house. It doesn't have to be perfect, though. This is just what I could find. And I glue one of the little stilts to each one. And then for the bottom of the structure, I'm going to use one of the bamboo cutting boards from Dollar Tree. I love crafting with those. But you could use whatever you have that's going to be like a rectangular size. And we can just do the little beach house up on the stilts. Now, since it is a beach house underneath the stilts, it would make sense that we would have sand down there, right? And because this is a beach house. So again, I'm going to use school glue and a paintbrush. And we're just going to put a nice thick layer of glue all over underneath the stilts. But I made sure to glue those down first so I could glue those to the solid wood structure. Then again, I'm using some white sand from the Dollar Tree. 
sprinkling that all over. You might want to put something down first before you do this because the sand does get a little messy. And then I use the spray glue from Dollar Tree um, to um, glue it down, adding another layer to making sure that the sand was nice and thick. For the front part here, I want it to look like the ocean is lapping up against the beach house. And so I wanted to add something blue for like to represent the ocean. So I did a layer of tacky glue and then I'm using those little light blue pebbles from the Dollar Tree to make it look like water. Added a little bit more here, tacky glue here, just to kind of make the water just this little tiny corner, just lapping up against one of the stilts of the beach house. And the tacky glue grades works great for the pebbles because it's a nice, strong adhesive that's gonna dry clear. I also sprayed adhesive on top of it to help glue it down. Now to attach our beach house, I just used hot glue to attach it to that wood sign that was right on top. And now we can start working on our yard. I thought we needed a little pink flamingo, but instead of a pink flamingo, I thought we could make it look creepy. So I found a little pink flamingo lip gloss from the Dollar Tree and we are gonna paint it black. But any kind of pink flamingo that you can find from the Dollar Tree would be great for this. You could like make it look like a skeleton um, flamingo or you can just make it nice and creepy and black like I did. Now it didn't have any legs or anything like that. So I'm just gonna use a couple of toothpicks and cut them down to make little legs. And I can just attach this with hot glue on the bottom of the little lip gloss to make him stand up in our little beachfront yard. <laughs> Now I was going through my stash trying to find things that would be kind of coastal, creepy or cool, but my son had a fabulous idea. He said make it look like a sea monster was attacking the beach house. So that's what we're going to do. I used model magic and I formed a like tentacle, think like a giant octopus or something like that. And then I used an ink pen to actually give it like little tube feet all the way up. I'm gonna have it look like the sea monster is coming out of the ocean and attacking the haunted beach house. So I'm gonna do several tentacles and we can have them coming out, like reaching out, getting the house, kind of like wrapping around the little stilts and stuff like that. And this was the most amazing touch for it. I'm so glad that we added the little tentacles here for the sea monster. It's my favorite part of this DIY. Now they will harden, so I'm gonna let them sit for a little bit like that. Um, I did use a little hot glue to glue them down to make sure they don't go anywhere, but then I kind of have them wrapping around the house, which is fun. And I am gonna go back and paint those as well. Just gonna let those harden up a little bit. Then I decided to use a little like succulent from the Dollar Tree to kind of look like a little air plant, like maybe an aloe at the beach. And I just attached that to the sand with hot glue as well. And then I wanted a vehicle to park underneath the little stilts. And so I'm going to use this little blue um, truck that I got at, I think I got this at Dollar General. And I'm just going to give it a little beachy makeover. It's the perfect size. I just didn't really like the color on it. So I'm going to use like this chalk paint. This is the agave color. It's about the same color that we painted the beach house. And we're just going to do a little blue truck, which I love for fall. And then we can put some fall stuff in the back. This one had a little succulent in the back, um, but I kind of wanted to switch it up and make it look like a farm truck full of pumpkins to go with like the fall Halloween theme. But I just gave it a little makeover by painting all the little details because, you know, I got a little paint on there when I changed the color. So I'm just uh, touching everything up with a little bit of a paint pen. And you can see, I went through my whole stash trying to find stuff to decorate this with, but I did come up with some really fun ideas that we're gonna actually put on the beach house as well. For the pumpkins, I chose these little teeny tiny pumpkins on stakes that I found at the Dollar Tree. The only thing is they didn't have any like pumpkin stems. And so I'm just gonna use a little skewer from the Dollar Tree and paint that brown. And we can cut that down and make little pumpkin stems for our little teeny tiny pumpkins. I wanted something small enough to fit in the back of this truck. And I think these are gonna be perfect. They're made out of foam. So I just pushed those down in there 
And then to make sure everything stays put, I'm just gonna hot glue the pumpkins in the back of the truck. And we're gonna park that underneath of our little haunted beach house. It fits in there perfectly. Lots of details make this DIY really cute. I decided to hot glue it down to make sure it stays in place and then hot gluing our little black flamingo in the front yard as well. Now the extra coastal touches I decided to do was a little seashell that I had from the beach. I painted it just to look like a ghost with like three little black dots on it. I'm gonna have that coming out of a window. And then I took a black seashell I found from the beach and combined it with a Dollar Tree black spider. Also painting my shell a little bit darker to match. And I'm gonna have that attacking our little haunted beach house as well. So like a seashell ghost and a she seashell spider, I thought that would be really fun. Lots of fun details on this. And I'm gonna have them both attacking the house, kind of the ghost coming out of the little window in the front. Now I thought the beach house looked a little too cute and it needed to be a little creepier. So I decided to distress the whole thing with some antique wax by Waverly. Um, bringing out all the details and making it kind of look old and deserted, like a haunted house would, because this is a haunted house, remember, even though it's a super cute beach version. Now it's time to attach our little seashells here. I'm gonna hot glue the little ghost seashell that I picked out to be coming kind of out of the window here in front by hot gluing that onto the plastic house. And then I'm going to attach the little seashell spider to the roof because he's nice and large. So this little beach house is definitely getting, it, getting attacked and super decorated here for Halloween. Now I think that looks really good. I think we have tons of beach details on our little haunted beach house. But we can't forget the little sea monster that we created. It's time to paint it. I decided it would look really good in orange. So I'm using chalk paint by Waverly, the color pumpkin, to paint this. I decided to let it set up a little bit before I painted it. But, you know, they actually stiffen up. They hold up pretty well. You might experience a little cracking over the years, but... I thought it was such a fun touch and I'm so glad I decided to add the little sea monster touch. I knew I wanted something like that, but I just couldn't come up with the idea and I think that this was perfect. So I think everything looks great. I decided to paint the base here, that little wooden sign that we attached the um, house to, the same color as the house, just to kind of make that blend in a little bit. But otherwise I like the little stilts being like natural wood and here it is our little haunted beach house. So fun. So many little beachy fun details, but also so many fun like Halloween details. The seashell spider. We have our seashell ghost coming out of the window. Looks nice and creepy with all the distressing. We've got our little black flamingo in the front yard. We've got our little pumpkin truck parked underneath and of course the star of the show it's being attacked by our little orange sea monster coming out of the ocean what do you guys think about my haunted beach house one of my favorites now i wanted to do like a sea witch version of this um, witch hat wreath form from the Dollar Tree. So I wanted it to look coastal. I thought the best way to do that would be to cover it with some Dollar Tree rope. So I'm going to do part of it in rope, part of it in burlap, because that would require a lot of rope to do the whole thing in rope. So the brim of the hat, I just use Dollar Tree rope. It doesn't matter which one you use really. And I'm just wrapping that around. That's about how far one of my packages went. But then I'm just going to pick up where I left off and continue wrapping rope until I cover the entire brim of the hat. Of course, two was not quite long enough, but that's okay. I'll open another package here just to finish this off. Now for the um, witch hat, I'm going to use burlap. And all I had was the six inch roll. Um, so I'm going to have to kind of piece it together a little bit. Not ideal, but we'll get it to work. I glue it to the back of the rope brim of the hat. And then I'm gonna have it just kind of like go over 
the bars. I kind of wish I would have lined this first because you can kind of see the structure, like the little um, horizontal structure of the wreath form through it. But I'll show you how I fixed that problem too. I just glued the little seam on my burlap here all along the wire wreath form. I had cut off the other side to give it like a more rustic appearance and I'm gonna do that with my second piece too. That way when I overlap the two pieces of burlap together, they are gonna kind of blend in together a little bit better and make it look like one piece. Um, if you had one piece of burlap or one of the larger burlap rolls from the Dollar Tree, that would work great. I'm doing the same thing by folding it over and gluing it here to this side. And I'm just gonna have to go back and trim off the excess. Just cause one piece was not enough to cover the whole thing. So we trimmed off all the extra material here. I thought it would look great too if we kind of outlined the um, witch hat with the rope that we used on the brim of the hat to kind of bring that in as well. But it looks pretty seamless like that. I did kind of hot glue it to make sure it laid on top of each other like that. And I will go back and try to cover up the bars in just a minute. I know it's not real obvious, but I, I can be kind of a perfectionist sometimes with these things. Now I used the Dollar Tree rope, the same one we used on the brim, and I'm just gonna hot glue that all along, outlining the top of the witch hat. And we're gonna make this look not just like a regular like witch hat, I wanted to make like it look like a sea witch hat. So I'll show you how we do that. I have enough rope to go all the way around, so I just cut that down. And then I just cut some little mini strips of burlap, and I just tucked that underneath the bars here to kind of mask that showing through a little bit. And that seemed to work. Lining your burlap would help with that too. I'm just going to glue those in place so they stay put with just a little bead of hot glue, gluing the burlap to the reform but I don't want any of the glue to be visible on the front. Now, I thought our sea witch needed hair, so I'm gonna use one of those little grass skirts from the Dollar Tree. I cut off a piece just the right size for our little sea witch head. And leaving it on the twine, I make sure they're all kind of touching each other to make the hair look a little bit thicker. We're gonna attach that to the back of our little sea witch hat, which with some hot glue. I love the witch hat wreath form. I've made so many different things with that. One of y'all suggested that it looks like a sailboat the other day, and I've always thought that too, but I don't think I've ever created a sailboat out of it. But it sounds cute. So there is the hair, and then she is a sea witch, so she needs some coastal touches. I attach a Dollar Tree um, sand dollar here to the brim of the hat. Then I thought, you know, she might need a few more touches too, so I'm gonna add some seashells too. Now for the hanger, I just took some twine and knotted that up, just gluing that to the tip of the back of the little witch hat. And then we're just gonna decorate the entire brim of her hat with different seashells. Some I found from the beach, some are from Dollar Tree. I just wanted a good variety to completely line the hat. If it was a sea witch, I think that she would have seashells all over her hat. So that's what we're gonna do here. Lots of different colors and shapes and sizes just to kind of make it look kind of random. And maybe a bright red one here peeking out from behind. And this is how it turned out, our little sea witch hat. This would be really cute on your front door for Halloween or wherever you want to decorate it. I left the hair nice and long on mine um, and it's really kind of a large piece. As you can see, it's taking up like almost my entire hall tree right there. But I thought it was really fun, very easy to DIY. I love crafting with burlap and rope from the Dollar Tree. And anytime I can use some seashells, I am game. <laughs> And I think that the grass skirt them from the Dollar Tree just makes the perfect hair. And she could even be like a sea witch mermaid if you wanted. And speaking of 
mermaids. Let's do a mermaid skeleton. I found a great mermaid skeleton from the Dollar Tree and we're going to make a really cool underwater scene using a sign I got like half price. It was like $1.50 at Goodwill and I'm going to use it kind of inside out. So I don't really want the writing on the back. So I'm just going to use some Dollar Tree contact paper to cover that up. And then I'm gonna use it backwards like this so I can kind of make like a shadow box effect with the little Dollar Tree Skeleton Mermaid. I love that thing. It's one of my favorite things they have for Halloween. And this is just the right size to make a little box for her. Now I do want it to be blue. So I'm gonna use this Agave Chalk Paint by Waverly and we are gonna paint out the frame. I'm gonna try to fill it in to make it look like it's like, uh, maybe like a creepy dead um, mermaid like laying on the ocean floor, nice and creepy. I went ahead and painted the whole box blue though, just in case you could see anything through everything we're gonna add to it. I've seen these little skeleton mermaids at my Dollar Tree for the past couple of years. They also have some really cool seahorses. Um, so cool for coastal Halloween decorating. Look how perfect she is. Now I thought we could use some creepy things to make like a seabed scene in this. I'm gonna give her a quick little spray here of just some matte um, sealer just to kind of make her look not so plastic and shiny. I kind of want her to be like more of a matte finish, look a little bit more real, a little bit more creepy. But that's basically all I'm gonna do to her. Then I'm going to use like some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree and some reindeer moss to kind of mix it up with different colors, filling in our box where she can kind of lay against it, right? So I'm going to attach that inside the back of our little um, wood frame, I guess, and start gluing everything down because we're going to like display this on its side and I don't want all the stuff like falling out. So I thought like half Spanish moss, half reindeer moss, kind of make it look random like that where she can lay against the bed. And then I picked up these like, they kind of look like dead flowers to me or something like that would be coral. And they're from the Target dollar spot. And I thought they would be a fun little creepy touch. I was trying to look for things that would be like um, coral looking, creepy for Halloween. I also have some coral pieces that I just picked up at the beach. I thought they would be nice and creepy too. So we're gonna glue some of those in there. Basically whatever I could find that kind of reminded me of the seafloor, I'm gonna add to this. So I glued the flowers on the coral. I thought that gave it a fun touch. And I actually had this little piece of seaweed that I actually got at the beach too. And it's kind of a red color. I thought that would be perfect. I love crafting with items I can find at the beach. And then I thought our little mermaid definitely needed hair. She looks bald, right? So I'm just gonna use a little bit of raffia. You could also use the grass skirt for this. I just um, got enough that I could like wrap it around her head, hot gluing it to the top and letting the hair come down on the sides like that. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to have any kind of a style because she's just a creepy little a mermaid skeleton here. It's time to attach her. I just hot glue her down to all of the moss laying underneath, trimming up her hair into some kind of a hairstyle maybe. Maybe giving her another piece here in front. And then I add some seashells. I thought that would be a really fun touch to finish out our little ocean scene. And my son absolutely loved this DIY. He thought it was so cool. He wanted me to leave it out year round because it's so creepy. But I mean, this is perfect for a coastal Halloween. Am I right? I love it. Let me show how it, it turned out. Little skeleton mermaid from the Dollar Tree, but with the coral and the seashells and the moss and the creepy little touches, I think it looks like the ocean floor. Let's mix it up and do like a coastal spider DIY. I picked up one of these little tinsel spider webs from the Dollar Tree and I thought we could give it a makeover 
But first, removing, of course, all of the tinsel on here. I want to replace all of the tinsel from this spider web with some Dollar Tree rope to make a really fun coastal version of a spider web. And we can use the existing spider that came on it as well. Now to start our spider web, I decided to start with doing the rings first. And then we can do like the lines that go up and down and stuff like that. Instead of just hot glue, I actually tied mine on just to give it a little bit of a stronger point there. It is a little tricky with a spider web is because usually they kind of arch a little bit inwards when you're doing a spider web. So I was trying to get that arch a little bit here with my rope. So I kind of had to do like one little section here at a time. So I could kind of push it back with that slight arch in the spider web to get that right shape and to give it that spider web feel. Also, I want to cover up, of course, all of the black plastic underneath. And we're going to do that for all three rings here of our spider web. So it doesn't really matter the order that you do these. Just have to cover it all. I love remaking these little tinsel items from the Dollar Tree. You guys know I have done it for so many holidays and seasons. And a spider web is perfect to be made out of rope. You could also do this with like the white rope from the Dollar Tree. I think it'd be really cute too. You might want to use the thinner one though. The um, thicker one might be too thick for us. Once I get those all glued on, I'm just going to go around and start burning off the fuzzies just to clean it up a little bit. And we can start another package here to do these lines here. Now, you kind of have two options. You can kind of overlap the rope or you can cut down individual pieces to fit in there. Because if you overlap it like I do, you kind of get like a little bumpy, bumpy, but that's okay. It kind of keeps the line a little bit more seamless. So I start here with the second one and overlap that as well, hot gluing that and then tying it off. I thought that was probably enough overlapping in the center there. It was going to get a little too raised. So for the other pieces, I just cut one half um, down at a time and just glue those all on there until we have a rope spider web. Gonna go in and give that a quick burn for all of the little fibers that are on there as well. And then we can start working on the little spider to go on the front. You could always switch it up and use one of their tarantulas if you want, but I thought the spider was kind of cool, but I wanted it to look beachy and cool. So I decided to make my spider a light blue spider. So I just gave him a nice coat of blue paint and he's going to look perfect on the front of that little rope spider web. And there he is. I'm just going to attach him with hot glue. This DIY, it's a little time consuming to remove the tinsel and to glue the rope on. But otherwise, it's really simple. And it turns out so cute. See how coastal and cool that looks? And even if you didn't do a coastal style of decorating, I think it would still look nice for Halloween. It looks way more high end than the Dollar Tree tinsel for sure. And I love the blue and the brown together. It looks really good on that like ivory or lighter color wall like that with the brown rope as well. And it would be cute on your door for Halloween too. All right, let's thrift flip this sign. I wanted a little kind of solid wood sign and I got this really cute sign at the Dollar Tree. It's perfect for what I wanted to do. I wanted to make a little boxy like skeleton sign to display with these really cute skeletons that I found at the Dollar Tree. Now I kind of have to mask everything that was on there. It was like a teacher sign. So I just went over it with ivory until I kind of have a blank canvas and I want to do a really fun hand painted sign. I, when I do a coastal sign, you guys know I love like a blue sign with like white painting on it. I think it looks so beachy and fun. So that's what we're going to do for this little skeleton sign. So I'm going to start by painting all the sides and then the top, this agave chalk paint by Waverly. I, any kind of a light blue color I think is going to be really pretty. Then I used some stencil vinyl. I get that stuff on Amazon to create some stencils to make a hand painted sign. I found this image on Cricut Design Space, I think. I had to simplify it a little bit because it had a lot of pieces here. Um, sorry if I'm blocking the shot there with my head. I'm trying to see all those little pieces. The little Cricut Bright Pad works great for that. I've seen that the Dollar Tree, I think, pluses 
have like maybe a $5 version of this. The bright pad, that'd be really great. It really helps you see, especially if you have old eyes, <laughs> have trouble seeing to weed these out. But I did the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, because that is the little skeletons that I found from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to combine that with the word evil, which I didn't cut on the right setting, so it kind of weeded itself for me, <laughs> but it's still going to work. I use my paper transfer paper. I also get that on Amazon, both of the stencil, vinyl, and the paper transfer paper. I always have it linked in my Amazon shop below. I love it. You can use this paper, this transfer paper, on a freshly painted sign like that without getting any paint damage. Love that about it. And I'm going to do evil on the top and then the little skeletons on the bottom. I thought that'd be really fun. And I'll try to find the font I used for that. I don't think I saved this design um, on Cricut when I made this because I don't think I really knew how to save it at the time. But it was an existing image on Cricut Design Space if you have the membership. Gonna use some painter's tape to tape that down so I don't get any paint where I don't want it. And then I'm just gonna use a stencil dauber from the Dollar Tree and some ivory chalk paint to paint this on. I love a hand-painted sign. One of my favorite uses for my Cricut. I wanted a Cricut forever and I didn't have one. I got one for Christmas a couple of years ago for my um, husband and son for Christmas. Christmas. It was the only thing I wanted and I'm so glad I got it. I um, love it. I wish I would have got one a long time ago. So just going to remove all of the painter's tape and my stencils to reveal this great image. And then since the skeletons had so many little pieces, I do have to go in and weed all the little stencil vinyl out. But I did actually simplify that image a little bit to make it a little bit easier. I'm just going to touch up here and there wherever I think it needs it. But otherwise, I want it to look rustic, right? So these are the skeletons that I found at the Dollar Tree that I wanted to make a sign to display with them. I think they're perfect together and how fun. I'm just going to use like a little riser from the Target Dollar Spot to raise that up. And then we can like display the little skeletons right in front. I love like a ivory distress. So that's what I'm going to do on the hand painted sign. Just go over it with blue and with ivory, just to kind of make it look a little bit more coastal farmhouse. And I'm gonna do that along the sides of it too. And it really turned out really high end, I think. I love it. I love how I have the little skeletons to match. Look how cute that turned out. So fun, I love those skeletons. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about my Facebook group. I always have it linked in the description below. You can find out when I post new videos. You'll also get to see what everybody else has been crafting. We would love to have you over there. I also have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest, and my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube on all of those. Let's do another spider DIY with some coastal touches. I found this fun little spider website at Dollar Tree and I thought we could remake it. It's got the shape of a spider web, but I didn't really appreciate all of the glitter all over this. And so we're gonna kind of remake the other side. So to cover up the glitter and to have a nice finish back for a DIY, I used some contact paper from the Dollar Tree and then I just wanted to cut it down to size. Now, since it was kind of a you know weird shape, it was a little bit easier to cut the excess um, contact paper with the scissors and that art shape than it was to use my sanding block, which is usually easier. So I decided just to trim that all down and that covers up all the glitter and gets that all out of the way. Now we can start with a blank canvas on the back of our little spiderweb sign. I wanted my spiderweb sign to have a blue background to make it look fun and coastal. So I used chalk paint by Waverly in the Gave color. I think I lightened it just a little bit there to give a light blue background. Now to do the spiderweb, I'm gonna start by using a white paint pen. I do end up using actual paint on it, but this gave me a good start. And I just start crossing the spider web to connect one point to the point from the other side, right? So you have all those different angles coming out. Then you want to connect each one of your edge pieces. Sorry about my head there. <laughs> 
and then I'm going to want to do the same thing um, on the inside, but then I didn't really think I was getting enough bold lines with just the paint pen. So I switched it up to some ivory paint and a little tiny brush to give me some bolder edges to do this like spider web. Basically you want to do the same design that was on the back, but instead of glitter, we're going to have like more of a matte finish with the ivory chalk paint. So I'm just going to go over all of my existing lines here, make them a little thicker and bolder with my paintbrush. And then once I get those all on there, I can do my little sections here in the middle. Super easy. You just do like an arch shape and connect them all the way around. And it looks like a fun little coastal spider web now with that fun blue color. I'm going to distress mine all over with a little ivory for a little coastal farmhouse vibe on this. And then instead of using like the cartoon like spider that came with this sign, I'm actually going to use one of the little tarantulas from the Dollar Tree and make it look creepy. So I just replaced the hanger with a little bit of twine. And I think the little tarantulas from the Dollar Tree come in two colors. I think they come in black and brown, but I couldn't find brown and I really wanted brown. Um, so I'm actually going to paint mine. Um, I used this, I can't remember the shade of this. It's like a, a light brown color and it's a chalk paint, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just painting all over just because I wanted like a dark brown spider instead of a black, but it's basically just personal preference. But just in case you didn't know, you definitely can paint the little fuzzy spiders and stuff like that kind of get whatever look you want. I switched up to a smaller brush to kind of get in all of the sides and the details all around the little spider legs. And then I think he's going to look really cute attached to that spider web sign that we just painted. I'm a little extra, so I painted the bottom too just to kind of finish him off in case you could see any of that from the front or the side. He is pretty dry, so we're going to go ahead and attach him to our spider web with hot glue. I thought maybe right down here on the spider web would look good. And then I thought maybe the sign could use like a word for Halloween. I thought that'd be really cute. So I decided to see what I had for like Halloween sign words from the Dollar Tree, and I found a couple options. They're the metal words. And any of them would really work. You could do like spooky, beware, I think is a really fun one for a spider, right? And I think that that's going to look really cute too. I didn't really want the galvanized metal though. So I was trying to see if I could do like a faux wood look. So I first started with some antique wax by Waverly and kind of tried to distress that in one direction to get a wood grain. I didn't find that it was real obvious though. I think you might need an ivory background first. So I painted it with ivory <laughs> and then I'm going to go back in and distress it with Antique Wax by Waverly to give that wood grain. It's going to kind of match our brown spider and um, some of my little coastal decor. And that turned out way better um, doing the paint first. Kind of gave the Antique Wax something to stick on and give a contrast to. Just attaching our little beware sign to the top part of our spider web. And I think this little spider, coastal spider sign turned out so cute. It was really easy to do. I love the colors and I love our creepy little spider right on front. And I think adding the beware sign really helped make it pop. That spider looks kind of creepy though, to be real. All right, let's do a coastal skeleton sign. Actually, we're gonna do three of them. I chose three long signs from the Dollar Tree. They have plain ones now, which would be even easier for this, but I'm gonna use Halloween ones, doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree roller set because these are gonna be big signs. Sometimes I find the roller a little bit easier to paint when I'm using a large sign. So, got that set up. Doesn't matter what signs you use. I just used Halloween signs that I had that were long. I just wanted three long signs that are all the same size. I think they're pretty universal size from the Dollar Tree. I do wanna cover up all of the glitter and crazy stuff going on those though. So I did cut down some contact paper from the Dollar Tree just to seal those up and give them a finished back. 
I always like doing that for a Dollar Tree piece. If it's not like a blank piece and I'm reusing something like that, I don't want to have that all on the back. And I always like to seal the glitter up so it doesn't get everywhere. And then we can DIY the backs of these. I wanted to do like three signs. Two of them are gonna be like skeleton signs. One is going to be a sign with words on it. It's gonna kind of tie it all together. Paper was loose on this one, so I just went ahead and removed it, which made it a little bit easier. I can decorate the front part of that one. But again, Dollar Tree has blank ones now, and that's gonna make it easier because you don't have to do all that preparation first. Now for this sign, we are gonna paint this one ivory. So I just go over the whole sign with some ivory chalk paint. And then I am going to go in for my next sign and paint it ivory as well. I wanted two ivory and one blue, kind of the two colors I decorate my house with for a coastal vibe. But if you don't do coastal, you can always do this DIY and do it in some creepy Halloween colors or the color of your choice. So this is gonna be my blue one. I just used chalk paint by Waverly in the color agave. And then I'm actually gonna make our skeletons that color too. So it's all gonna coordinate nicely together. Lots of blue and white. Now for the skeletons, I'm gonna use two of these little hanging skeletons from the Dollar Tree. One of mine was broken, but that's okay. We can always piece it back together later. And then I want to make these skeletons blue. These are going to go on the ivory signs, so they will definitely pop on there. Now, they are connected by these little, like, little hooks to connect all their joints, but I'm actually not going to use that for most of my skeleton design, so I just went ahead and removed them. I just want all of the bones, and anyway, those would get in the way when I'm going to paint these. So I just take all the rings off. I do save some of them because I do need a couple of them in the final design, but otherwise we're gonna attach all the bones to the signs. So we've got a big pile of bones at this point. <laughs> so I'm just gonna line them all up and we can paint them all blue. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and use my roller just so I can kind of do it all in one big swoop. I want lots of blue bones. I do have a little bit of the skeleton left. So let's do this part as well. And the raw wood is so easy to craft with from the Dollar Tree. It takes the paint perfectly. Now it's time to make our little skeletons. We're actually gonna do a his and a her, and you'll see why here in a little bit. And I'm gonna just start attaching these to it. I want them to be even, so I kind of put them side by side so that um, they would be lined up perfectly when I go to attach them all. And I'm just hot gluing everything down. All of the bones fit on the sign, except for the arm bones, because they're gonna kind of go out to the sides. And so that is where I actually had to use the little rings. Um, I kind of pieced those back together to keep the arm together because it's gonna kind of hang off the side. And that kind of made sense. I decided to do my skeletons doing different things. This one's gonna have like one arm raised, like it's partying maybe. <laughs> and it's fun to do a little variety with our skeletons. Now to kind of break up some of the blue and to make it look coastal, I'm gonna go over our little blue skeletons with a little ivory, distressing them all over, just to kind of make them go with my coastal farmhouse vibe. Then I'm just gonna use some twine to make new hangers for these. And then we can get started on the third sign that we're actually gonna hang in between the two skeleton signs, which is really gonna tie this together and kind of make it make sense. My husband got such a kick out of this one. For the blue sign, I distress it with ivory too to give it that same feel. I also measured it to make a stencil because I wanna make this a hand-painted sign. Using my stencil vinyl that I got on Amazon, I cut this out. I used some really fun, creepy Halloween fonts. I will put all the fonts that I used down in the description below if you wanted to recreate this, because I think the spiderweb font is really cool. And I don't think I saved the file itself, um, but I know that I um, recorded all the fonts that I used for this one, because what I'm gonna have this say is, till death, 
do us part. I even found this cool death like in a coffin in the Cricut design space. And then I'm going to have that between the his and the her skeletons till death do us part. So it's a little funny wedding joke sign here, I guess, for Halloween. Nice and creepy. And I'm going to use my paper transfer paper to attach our little stencil to the front of our blue sign. And I'm going to do my favorite, the ivory on blue coastal sign. And it's going to look so fun in between those two little blue skeletons. Trying to make sure that I leave down the pieces that I need to and get this all smoothed out. Um, and ready for paint. I'm actually just going to use my ivory roller that we used before with the sponge roller. If I do get a little bit of bleeding um, from doing it this quick way, it's going to be fine because I distress it anyway. I think it's going to turn out really good. Once that dried, I went over it with another coat to make sure that all the lettering is going to be nice and bold. And now it's time to remove our stencil vinyl to reveal our hand painted sign. Really fun. I like the death in the coffin. I think that looks nice and creepy for Halloween. And I love like this like little spider web font that I used up here, even though it was a little tricky to weed. <laughs> it gave it a fun Halloween touch for sure. So we're just going to weed out all of the vinyl. And this one actually already had a hanger on it, so I don't need to attach anything to it. And then, of course, I'm just going to distress it all with blue, kind of the same contrasting color that was on the sign before, just to kind of break it up and make it look a little bit more rustic. Now, let's see how it looks with the skeletons on each side. Perfect. I did want one to look like a girl, though. So I'm going to put a bow on her, like, skeleton head. I found these cute little blue bows on clearance at Walmart, actually. And they're hair bows, I think, which will be perfect, right? And so it was a little large, so I cut off the little tails, and we're just going to hot glue the little bow on our girl one. And this is how it turned out, till death do us part. Little skeleton sign, so coastal and fun, but really cute and creepy for Halloween. Isn't that a fun idea to use those little skeletons from the Dollar Tree? I really like how they all come together and kind of make a large piece for my wall. Okay, the next DIY, we are going to remake another tinsel item from Dollar Tree. This is the giant spider. So, of course, we're going to remove all the tinsel on this little guy. And I'm going to show you how you can make a really cool rope spider. Um, a lot of you guys thought that this spider turns out looking like a mummy, which can make it a mummy spider, which I love that idea, too. I think that's really fun. So it's just a matter of removing all of the tinsel and you get left with this great cage that you can kind of make anything out of. The rope that I'm going to use for this is the white rope um, from Dollar Tree, the nautical rope. It's the thicker white rope. And we're going to start here with the body and then we can start on the legs. I'm going to do like um, a spiral pattern starting in the middle. And just wrapping around in a curly cue until we have a circle for the body of our spider. So easy. All I'm doing is hot gluing it down to, to the little different plastic pieces of the cage. And kind of gluing it to itself too. Just so there's a nice tight seam and you can't see between the different ropes. And I'm going to do that until I get all the way over to where like it overlaps the little spider legs. And then we can go ahead and cut that piece down. Now for the, um, this part of it, I kind of needed a smaller rope. So I'm actually unwinding the larger rope from the Dollar Tree into three separate little ropes. Um, and it's going to give me a smaller rope to work with for this part because we're going to start in the legs. Um, I thought the wider rope would be too thick and bulky to go around these little tiny skinny legs like this. And so this is what I ended up doing and it worked out great for this. And of course the rope's going to, you know, match the same color. I don't have to worry about switching like to a different size of rope. Also like the macrame rope they have at the Dollar Tree now would work really well for the legs too if you did not want to unwind your rope, but it definitely worked well for this. I just hot glue it to the plastic cage and then wrap all eight of our little spider legs. 
eight legs a lot, so we're going to speed this way up. But you get the idea. I just start with hot glue in the middle and wrap that around, hot gluing it from time to time to the cage to make sure it's nice and tight on there. And I'm actually going to make this spider like a wall hanging, so I'm going to actually have it hanging on a web of rope too. So it turned out so fun and cute. Last leg, we got them all wrapped and now we just have to worry about like the little head of the spider here, if you will. So I'm going to use that same unwound rope. I have lots of it to do the head and that worked well for that too. I cut off the little pinchers at the end. I didn't think they're really important to the design of the spider and just wrapped that circular shape like that with the thinner rope. Now I loved it, but I didn't like the unfinished underbody because it's going to be a wall hanging. And so I decided to do some of my extra pieces of rope I had there just to cover the inside of it, just to finish it off. Now for the web, I just take one of those unwound pieces of rope into the thirds and I'm just going to tie a little loop here at the end to make a hanger. And then we can make it look like he's hanging from a spider web. You could kind of do it either way. I chose to do mine here with like, the head up, but it could work the other way too. I don't think it really matters. And I just glue that to the underside of our spider web, just like that. And this was so fun to make. It's a little time consuming to do a rope DIY from the Dollar Tree, but look how cute this turned out. It definitely does kind of look like a mummy spider, but it goes great with coastal decor and it's nice and creepy for Halloween. I think it turned out really beautiful. You would never know that was a tinsel spider to begin with. And I had the perfect little wall to hang this and it goes in with all my coastal decor I already have on my wall. Now for the next DIY, I'm gonna make another kind of spider sign using some supplies from the Dollar Tree. I start off with a Dollar Tree chalkboard. I love crafting with these because they're thicker, they don't bow as much, but basically I just wanted a rectangular shape and I'm gonna paint it so it doesn't really matter. Um, I love the back of those cause they're nice and plain, but I like to cover the writing on the other side, which is gonna be my new back with contact paper from the Dollar Tree, just to kind of make it look more finished. The only issue with these is always trying to get that tag off the back, but with a little goo gone, it definitely comes off. I just used a sanding block to remove my excess contact paper and we kind of have a blank canvas. I'm gonna use a spider sign from the Dollar Tree for this, but I wanted to have like a couple signs together. So um, I want the back sign of this to be blue. So I mix some agave chalk paint by Waverly with some ivory to give me this nice light beachy color of blue. And that's gonna be a great background sign for the spider web. Now, even though I'm using chalk paint, it did still require a couple of coats. And then I'm gonna distress it all in one direction with a little ivory and a chunky brush, wiping off the excess with a baby wipe to give me that distressed coastal vibe. Gotta be careful though. I may have wiped a little too hard and you can see a little bit of the chalkboard peeking through. So I did have to touch that up a little bit. So be careful if you're cleaning up your distressing with a baby wipe like I do. I'm just gonna feed some twine in from the back, not that in the front to replace the hanger on that. And uh, this part of the sign is complete. We can start working on uh, the spider sign. And this is a really cool blank, like um, raw wood sign that I got at the Halloween aisle at the Dollar Tree with the spider and the spider web, but it's got like an ornate frame too. So I love the fact that it's raw wood. So I'm gonna start by staining it with Antique Wax by Waverly. And we're still gonna have like different colors on this. I do want it to have like a white web to go against the blue sign, but I definitely wanted to bring in some browns with the staining. So I stained the ornate frame and also the spider with the Antique Wax by Waverly, just wiping off any excess with a paper towel. Then for the spider web, I switched to a tiny brush and some ivory paint um, so we can kind of get some detail painting here to um, kind of go around the areas that we stained and give it that white web look. Just trying to be careful, taking it one section at a time and avoiding the areas that we already stained. But I guess it probably doesn't really matter because you know your girl is gonna go back 
and distress this because I love that look. So I distressed the whole thing with a little bit of ivory, kind of working in one direction to make it look a little coastal farmhouse. Wiping off any of the excess with a baby wipe. And then this sign is going to be ready to combine with the blue sign that we did. I also wanted to add some letters to it. So I'm going to use some Dollar Tree wood letters. And I wanted to spell out the word eek. I thought that'd be really fun for Halloween. And so I wanted to paint them all ivory. And that's going to be the perfect touch to go with the spider sign. So we can do this spider sign up here at the top. And I have enough room left on the bottom part of my sign for the word eek. And so I just use a little hot glue to attach this. Anytime you layer a Dollar Tree sign like this, it's going to make it look so much nicer and thicker and more substantial. And then I'm going to do the word eek over here in the bottom corner. And this is really easy Halloween DIY to make, but it looks so coastal and cute. There it is our little spider sign using a Dollar Tree chalkboard, a Dollar Tree spider sign, and a few Dollar Tree wood letters. I love those wood letters. You only get one of each letter. So if you want to do like a word like eek, you're going to have to get two packages of those. Super fun and creepy. I love the spiders. But now we're going to switch it up and do lots of black cat DIYs. And we're going to use a black cat sign from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to combine it with a dollar spot sign that I got on clearance at Target. Just because it was the perfect size for what I needed. And I want to make this little black cat have a coastal makeover. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the little jack-o'-lantern face that was on the front of the pumpkin with a little heat. I do want the pumpkin, but I don't necessarily want it to be a jack-o'-lantern like that. But I want to remove that too so that I can paint it. I thought it would be easier to paint the pieces separately, but who knows? Because sometimes these things can be really glued on like this one. Try not to cause too much damage on it by taking it apart. I don't need my little cat sign to be hanging anymore. So I'm just using some um, nail hole filler there to fill up the holes for the hanger for the little black cat. And definitely has to be black. So I'm going to go over that with some ink chalk paint, painting the whole cat black. And what we're going to be doing with these black cat DIYs is decorating my coffee bar for Halloween. Um, I kind of had a smaller coffee bar at the time. And so it's not going to be a whole lot of DIYs, but I think they turned out really cute. Now for the little pumpkin, I still wanted to have a pumpkin and I did kind of mess it up a little bit by removing it. So I had to kind of patch it and I want a pretty blue pumpkin because I wanted this to have a coastal feel as well. We're continuing with the coastal theme. So I mixed a little agave and ivory together to give me a light blue pumpkin, but I also wanted to have some little details too. I used like this mint green paint pen to kind of do some little pumpkin lines on that. And then I want to distress everything with ivory to give it that coastal look. I'm even going to distress our little black cat too. And we're going to kind of put all these pieces back together on that dollar spot sign from Target to do a really fun black cat sign to hang on the wall for my coffee bar. But this would be great for any kind of Halloween decor. Even though it's black, I really like the distressing. I think that gives it a really cool vibe. Now, I'm going to take some wood dominoes from the Dollar Tree. I just needed anything blue, painted that blue, and you'll see why here in just a second. Now, for the Dollar Spot sign, it had black edges, which I didn't really like. So, I'm just going to mask those by framing it out with some Dollar Tree rope. I just glue that on to all four sides, and then we're going to just use the wood front on that because I like that. It's already got a hanger on there, too. So... Um, I'm going to kind of work around that if I can. And I haven't been finding these signs, the Target Dollar Spot, as much. I always loved it because at the end of the season, they would always go on clearance. But they have some great plain options like this at the Dollar Tree now, too. Now it's time to put it all together. The reason I painted that domino blue is because I wanted my cat to have blue eyes. Isn't that fun? So I'm just going to tuck that behind. 
I'm also going to use a few more dominoes to kind of make it flat since it's going to have that domino underneath the eyes, right? I don't want that part of the sign to sit out. And um, we're going to use that to kind of just bump it all out. So I'm just going to attach the blue behind my cat to give him some pretty blue, coastal blue eyes. And then we're also going to use some dominoes on the back of the cat to help attach that down. And then we're just going to glue the whole thing together by putting some glue on all three of the dominoes and attaching that to the target dollar spot sign. I love putting the different colored eyes behind it. I really think that looks cool. I guess you could always paint the sign behind it too. Now for the little blue pumpkin, we're going to reattach that too. I thought that the little pumpkin stem needed a little something, so I used a little hot glue and Dollar Tree twine to make that look fun and coastal. And I'm gonna use like a little domino there just to help attach it to. I know those little wooden dominoes are pretty much impossible to find at Dollar Tree anymore, which is a real bummer because I used to craft with these all the time. I got some there the other day and they're plastic and they're thicker and I'm like, yeah. Not really what I wanted, but okay. So I glue that back on, on the front leg of the cat, kind of like it was before. And then I wanted to give it a fun coastal touch. So I'm gonna use some of these little laser cut craft um, items from the Dollar Tree. I chose a dolphin and then maybe a little seashell from the beach to decorate my little pumpkin. And then I thought maybe a few more seashells would be cute on there too, to finish it off and give it that coastal touch. I'm gonna glue my little dolphin right here to the front of the pumpkin. If you like the jack-o'-lantern look, you could probably still do that, but I kind of wanted a little bit more of a sophisticated looking pumpkin on this. And I'm gonna use a few seashells I found from the beach just right over here on the other side of our little black cat. I wanted to tie a little jute twine down for a little bow for a little decorative touch also to add to our little pumpkin right here in front. And we're just gonna attach that right there to the stem. I think our black cat is looking super beachy and fun. I did wanna switch out the hanger though. I had some Dollar Tree wood bead garland and I thought that'd be a fun touch. There's little hooks like on the top of this dollar spot sign which makes it easy to make a hanger. And so I'm just gonna take the would be garland and the twine that's already in that and then use that to tie that onto the top of the sign just to give it a fun little touch. And that's pretty much it for this little black cat DIY. Um, this one was really fun to put together and a great way to use one of those wood blank black cats from the Dollar Tree. Um, speaking of, have you seen the wood cutouts this year at the Halloween Isle at the Dollar Tree? My stores have finally started getting some out and they're really large this year for $1.25, I think. Now, I didn't really think that my lines on my pumpkin looked great, so I just touched it up with a little bit more ivory distressing and lines on my pumpkin. Because I always think it needs just a little bit more distressing and then it'll be perfect, right? And this is how it turned out. This is how our little black cat looks hanging with my Halloween coffee bar. Okay, another tinsel item from the Dollar Tree. This is a little black cat. And um, they have two different versions of this. I kind of liked this one because it was a little bit more streamlined, but you could probably do this with either version. This one's kind of like maybe the Day of the Dead version because it's got all these paper cutouts on there too. So that was the other thing when I'm removing all the tinsel on this. I also had to remove a lot of cardboard and stuff. But in the end, it's going to give me a great black cat cage to do a fun coastal DIY with. And I'm going to make this a sitting black cat um, to sit on my coffee bar. But it'd be probably even easier if you made it like a hanging sign. Now we're going to wrap the entire thing with Dollar Tree rope. I used the thinner brown rope and I'm just going to wrap all the way up along that cage. It did require a lot of rope because I'm wrapping around the back too. I guess if you wanted to cut each piece, um, it wouldn't have like the rounded edges. It would take half the rope or you can, I guess, go back and forth, but this is going to be kind of a big 3D piece sitting there. And so I kind of wanted it to have um, a little bit of a back on here as well. 
the body of it was super easy because it was all kind of streamlined. The only part it got a little bit more complicated was with the cat shaped head. So I just did the body first. Then for the face, I started right in the middle and we're just gonna glue spirally around until we get a nice round shape for the face of the cat. And then we will have to decorate the ears too. I didn't really decorate the back of the head with rope, so I did have to kind of patch that in a little bit. You'll see how. I cut off the hanger, and then we're also gonna take the rope to decorate all of the little ears. You definitely have to use some hot glue to kind of keep this in place, but basically just wrapping around the whole thing. And then I used some twine to kind of fill in some of my um, spaces in between the ears and the body, just to fill it all in with rope. Wanted to see if I could paint it black and it painted really well. So I'm gonna use some black chalk paint. This is the ink chalk paint. And we are gonna paint all of the rope black because I want my cat to be black and Dollar Tree doesn't have any black rope. And this actually turned out really cool. So um, I used a brush so I could kind of get in in between all the different pieces of rope and really get good coverage on that. I think that looks pretty cool. I like a little bit of the rope showing through. Now for the base of mine, I decided to use a ruler um, and a cutting board from Dollar Tree to give me a base because I wanted to make mine standing up, which made it a little bit tricky. Just trying to find the center so I can kind of cut a groove in there for the ruler. And then I thought I could feed the ruler up inside the rope like that to provide a little bit of structure for my sign, but I don't want it to look all crazy on the back like that. So I just used some burlap. And we are just gonna kind of patch that up because the back was not completely solid, um, especially since I didn't go over um, the back of it with rope, but you could use whatever you wanted. I just wanted it to be a little bit more finished here in the back and burlap did the job. So I think that looks better. Now we can start on the base. I wanted to cut a little groove in there and I did that with my drill, um, just by cutting lots of little pieces next to each other, trying to cut out a little notch. I'm not a woodworker, I don't claim to be. <laughs> and then I used a combination of hot glue and wood glue to try to glue that ruler right in place to try to give me a little bit of structure. It wasn't as strong as I wanted, so I also hot glued the rope um, to the cutting board too. But I still felt like it was kind of heavy and I didn't know how strong it would be and I really wanted it to hold up. So I did another row of hot glue, but then I decided to add like a little wood block, jangle block here to the back where you wouldn't really be able to see it just to kind of give it something to glue to the two pieces and give it a little bit more structure. And that made it a lot more stable even though that wasn't originally in the plan. Now I want it to look like a little black cat is at the beach. So I do school glue all over and then I'm coating that down with some white sand to make it look like our little black cat is at the beach because we're doing the coastal Halloween theme here. Even for my coffee bar. It's a fun variation on Halloween and it's definitely different. Something that you're not gonna see just at anyone's house. So I use some spray adhesive to go on top to make sure the glue or the sand is down, sprinkling that with a little bit more glue. And I kind of glue over that block, block in the back with some sand too, to um, make that kind of hidden. Now I wanted some pumpkins. They have these little blue velvet pumpkins on a pick at the Dollar Tree. I like the fact that they're blue, so I thought that would look kind of fun and beachy, right? And I thought we could put some of those over to the side of our black cat and maybe some seashells from the Dollar Tree on the other side. And our little Halloween beach, I just hot glued those down, pushing that down into the sand so it kind of attaches to the sign underneath. And then I thought my little blue pumpkins were a little bluer than I wanted. And so I actually um, kind of touched them up with a little bit of ivory paint just to lighten them up a tiny bit. So they'd be the perfect shade of blue. And we'll put those here on the other side of our little rope black cat. 
And again, if you were gonna make this a hanging sign, it would be a lot less work because you wouldn't have to worry about making the base of it, but this is a fun idea too. Now I got it all done and I said, asked my son what it needed and he said, your cat does not have a tail. And I said, you know what? You are absolutely right. Our cat doesn't have a tail, so I'm gonna make one. This is some of the thicker wire from Dollar Tree. It can be a little tricky to find, but you can use whatever kind of wire you got. A clothes hanger would probably work for this as well. And I just do like a cat tail shape here. And since our cat was made out of rope, our tail needs to be made out of rope. So once I got that shaped, I just used that same Dollar Tree rope and wrapped all the way around until we have a nice little rope cat tail. And the fun part is since it is made out of wire, you can kind of position this to kind of make it look however you want for that like, you know, curve shape of a cattail. So we got it all cleaned up. Heat gun works great if you have a little bit too much hot glue, which I thought I had. Burned off all the fuzzies and then we're gonna paint it black to go with our little black cat. And then we're gonna attach that to our cat. And I'm so glad I added that touch because he's right, our little cat needed a tail. I used hot glue to kind of attach it to the back where it kind of peeks out from the side and from the back, just like that. And that actually worked out really well. Sometimes your little black cat just needs a tail, right? This is how it turned out. I think it's so cute. One of my favorite Halloween DIYs ever. I love it. Now you kind of got a preview of this next DIY. I picked up this sign at the Dollar Tree. It was like $3. I liked it because it had like a sliding sign that you could kind of take out, but you could kind of DIY this on anything. I tried to remove the paint on there with some fingernail polish remover. And it kind of worked, it kind of didn't work because I just wanted a plain black sign because I wanted to make a black cat coffee bar sign, a little custom sign for my coffee bar. And that's about all I could get off with that. So we'll just paint that black and then um, we can add to it to make our own sign. I was afraid you might see the white writing still through it though. So I did a coat of ivory first, kind of a blank canvas, then followed that up with black paint. So it is nice and solid, looks black, kind of like a chalkboard. Now I went to my Cricut and cut out white vinyl. I did Blunt Cat Coffee Company, and then I just picked a cat out of Cricut Design Space to cut out with that as well. Lined it all up, and we're just gonna add the vinyl straight to the black sign. It's gonna be a really cute little custom sign for a black cat coffee bar. Super easy. I just use my paper transfer paper here, and we can add that to the sign that we just painted black. I don't really need the hanger on this frame, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. I slide it in just so I can kind of see where the frame needs to be so I can line it up properly, and then just add the white vinyl on front. Super easy, super cute. And the like wood frame kind of gives it a little bit of a coastal vibe to go with our coastal Halloween coffee bar. Black Cat Coffee Company, perfect for a coffee bar. And I even have a cute ghost on the other side. <laughs> and I can always flip that around if I want to. I do want my frame to stand up and I didn't think it was quite strong enough to stand on its own. So I did use a little five below Jenko block on the back to make it stand up strong. And this is how it looks on my coffee bar for Halloween. Okay, I always like my coffee bars to have some kind of a garland or pennant banner. So I thought we would make a custom one here for a black cat and Halloween. But I also, I'm gonna give it a coastal touch, you'll see. So I used two of the little black cat wooden ornaments from the Dollar Tree and two of the little wood pumpkin ornaments from the Dollar Tree. I do the pumpkins in blue, of course. I'm using agave chalk paint and the cats are in black. Now I thought it'd be really cute to um, kind of tie in the wood beads that we used on the black cat sign before. So we're gonna actually string these on wood beads. And I'm also distressing them all with ivory to give them that same coastal farmhouse vibe that we have on all of them. I thought a few lines on the pumpkin too would give it a little bit more dimension and kind of blend those in as well. Very cute. Now this is the wood bead garland from the Dollar Tree that I'm gonna use. 
you could always string your own. And then I just used the little tiny twines that come with the ornaments um, to tie those on the would-be garland. And that's a fun little touch for a little Halloween garland. And I was just going to do like black cat, blue pumpkin, you know, repeat that. But I always like to do like an odd number. So I got those all on there and I kind of felt like it still needed something. So I decided to add like a coastal touch. Once I got all those on there, I wanted one more thing. So I'm going to use one of the little wood starfish um, ornaments from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree for a little orange starfish. I thought that'd be fun. Definitely gonna give it a coastal vibe. I painted it in pumpkin. And then going back, trying with my paint pen, um, I think my paint might have not been quite dry enough to kind of put that design back on it. And then distressing it with ivory as well to kind of make it match all of our other items on the little garland. And I'm gonna tie that right in the center. Since I just tied these on, it's really easy to um, kind of move these. I kind of counted how many wood beads too, so that everything is kind of spaced equally. And then we're just gonna attach that to the front of our um, coffee bar. I decided my pattern was kind of messed up. It kind of was. I want the black cast to be on the outside, then pumpkin, pumpkin, the starfish in the middle. That looks better. And this is how I have it on my little shelf I had for my coffee bar. And that finishes out the coffee bar. And let me show you how it all looks together with all of our little coastal black cat DIYs. Super simple, but you could use these DIYs anywhere in your home. But hopefully it gave you a little bit more coastal Halloween crafting inspiration. I love the surprise of like the starfish and the seashells. You know your girl loves a coastal touch. But I think my favorite is that black rope, black cat. Super cute. Hey guys, I wanted to let you know that I've introduced memberships on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you're going to get early ad-free access to my videos. And you'll be help supporting me here on YouTube. And I want to give a huge shout out to my Crafty Beach Bum members. Huge thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Verna Noctegal, Julie Miller, Nancy Wunner, Jan Zalata, Tammy Coates, and Janae Farrington. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate you and it helps keep these videos coming. Okay, we made it through all 15 Coastal Halloween DIYs. Here is the final reveal. Don't forget to hit the like button. It really helps the video. Comment your favorite Halloween DIY below and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Queen of Hearts When everyone folds Your forge to holes Your place In your bed Showing no regret Close your eyes to hide your lies Roll the dice You got me tiptoeing Around you like you made a glass Got an invincible fence Letting everyone know not to trespass But you're bound to break down Bound to Get knocked right out of your boots when I use my witchcraft. You're playing it cool, bending all the rules, talking way too loud, and you're talking rude. You're playing a game, driving me insane. Your heart is back, and it's a fact, no turning back. You got me tiptoeing around. Don't
possible fans letting everyone know not to trespass but you're bound to break down bound to lose bound to get knocked right out it all the way to the end of my video if you'd like to watch more crafty beach youtube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here